we need seconds so I know exactly when to, to launch. Like NASA. Okay, we're good. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the December 16th board meeting of Dallas Town School Directors. In keeping with our past practice and tradition, I'd like to start the meeting with a moment of silence and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In looking around the table, all of our board members are present in person here this evening. And I will announce that prior to tonight's board meeting, we had an executive session to discuss expulsions, legal matters, and a review of the annual audit. Do I have an approval to approve? Do I have a motion to approve the board agenda as presented? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. This is the first point in the evening for public comments. I will remind individuals seeking to make a public comment that individual comments should be limited to two minutes or less. At a minute 45, our official timekeeper will let folks know that you're approaching your two minutes. If there are several individuals wishing to address the same topic, we may limit the total time for that topic to 30 minutes. If you are on the Zoom option, please select the raise your hand option. Our moderator will uh, inform you that you can unmute yourself and make your comment. If you are here live, please step up to the microphone. In both cases, please state your name and your address before your comment. And if we have either public uh, in person or Zoom comments, we will alternate back and forth. Are there any comments from the floor this evening? And I know uh, the first public comment online is Andy Myers. Andy Myers, you should be able to unmute yourself. <coughs> Hello. <coughs> Hello, I am Andy Myers. I live at Forest Hills Monarch Drive. I'm a father and a taxpayer. First off, I'd like to start by congratulating Mr. Pantano um, and Mrs. Hostler um, for their new positions. My wife and I talk about the both of you um, often and your your comments and your leadership and your really drive last fall in 2020. We really credit you two with getting our children back in school in person uh, when it appeared as though the meeting was going in the other direction to all virtual. We really feel like you all pulled that meeting back um, and got our kids back in person, which was invaluable. Um, I would also just like to speak to uh, the current, you know, mask optional, which we are very grateful for. And I would just like to point out to everybody that if you looked at the data leading up to the decision to go mask optional at the end of last week, I think it was, or maybe it was the beginning of this week, the coronavirus cases were increasing steadily at Dallas Town um, Area School District. And that was with the masking and with vaccines available to five to 12 year olds. So as that trend continues up, please take that into consideration um, when putting in any type of temporary orders you know, for the masking that the current uptick should not be tied to whether they're in mask or not because that trend had already started. And uh, Dr. Dole had spoke to that actually a couple of weeks ago, how he was kind of concerned about the, the uptick in cases. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comments this evening? 
Seeing there are no other public comments, we'll move in to the next. Uh, there are no special presentations this evening, so we'll move right into the superintendent's report. Dr. Dahl. Thank you, Mr. Pantano, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, in regard to uh, just kind of a relevant topic based on um, our, our public speaker, um, this past Friday, uh, relationship to the COVID update, uh, this past Friday, the PA Supreme Court affirmed the Commonwealth uh, Court's decision to vacate the mask mandate issued by Acting State Health Secretary. Uh, the decision is what prompted the district to return to an optional face covering effective immediately, and our decision to return to optional face covering aligns with, obviously, the, the DASD health and safety plan that we debated last month. Um, as a reminder, we still are required to uh, mandate face coverings on all district modes of transportation. Um, there have been several questions since the mandate has been put into effect uh, regarding quarantine. Um, and please know that since Thanksgiving break, even with mandatory face coverings, as just shared by Mr. Myers, uh, the district's COVID-19 positivity rate has continued to climb. So I would agree that there has been a, a rate in place prior to even the face covering. Um, as of right now, district quarantine procedures will remain the same, which means building level communications will be sent via email if your child was deemed as a potential exposure to a confirmed positive COVID-19 case. Uh, pending your child has no symptoms, they may continue to report to school. However, families, as you recall, will also have a choice uh, to quarantine their child if they prefer. So it really, again, continues with no symptoms. It continues to be a family decision. Um, the district will closely monitor our COVID-19, and we certainly will reassess should the need arise, but we obviously need to get a close look um, with some longitudinal data related to where we stand. So with the next uh, piece, I would like to highlight um, the current status of COVID-19 within our school community uh, through our dashboard, which can be found on our website. Um, the data is live and updated as we receive information from families. So, and this is data as of yesterday, we're actually down, I believe, right now to 107. Uh, but as of yesterday, we had 111 students and staff um, cases in the district. Uh, building breakdowns are also uh, listed. Um, as was communicated, again, we continue to see increases in school community cases. And again, this was occurring when uh, students were wearing masks. So it is something that we will uh, continue to monitor closely. Um, in relationship to a topic I'd like to address uh, with our community is social media. And over the past few weeks, reports coming into the district pertaining to inappropriate social media usage have climbed. Uh, report range from mild to highly offensive uh, and potentially illegal topics and postings. And the district, and in some cases, law enforcement. And I would like to give a shout out to the York Area Regional Police Force, we have one in the back, proud of what they have done and continue to support us, uh, have been thoroughly investigating numerous amounts of reports regarding social media, particularly at the secondary level. Uh, just this afternoon, uh, as an example, and this is, gives you an example for nationally speaking, there was a threat to schools tomorrow that we did communicate that through TikTok um, and the York Area Regional Police determined that's unfounded, uh, but obviously we, we continue to take um, safety as, as a priority. Um, I do want to take this opportunity to remind families that the district does not or does have very limited authority um, to intervene regarding many of the social media concerns that are not directly tied to campuses, transportation, or events. Um, so with that said, our primary goal is to ensure the safety of our students and our staff, uh, and we will investigate and collaborate with all law enforcement, local, state, and federal, um, however, knowing our limitations, we do remind parents to please be vigilant, please check your child's device, uh, please monitor their social media posts, be an active participant, um, and encourage proper use of social media. Um, it is something not, uh, we're immune just to Dallas Town, but it is something that we're seeing uh, a trend, and we're just asking for your partnership to uh, increase your vigilance. Um, in relationship to the time of year, I also just want to highlight a few uh, key events. I know we have a major event uh, tonight at the intermediate school that conflicted with the board meeting, but we have had a tremendous, uh, tremendous showcase of our student talent um, this past month as the holidays come forth. Uh, as a reminder, as a half day for students and teachers on Thursday, December 23rd, 
No school on Friday, December 24th through Friday, December 31st in celebration of the holiday break. And then we will resume with the new year, uh, 2022, um, on Monday, January 3rd. The last uh, piece, and I'm going to take a little bit of time, and I apologize in advance. I'd like to discuss something that we, has been in the works uh, for, for the last um, at least year and preparing for. And we will be asking uh, tonight, if you notice on our consent item, the Board of Directors to approve several leadership job descriptions. Uh, these descriptions came as a result of my recommendation to restructure the Dallas Town Area School District Administrative Team. Uh, based on many factors that directly affect future sustainability of Dallas Town. So in an effort to share uh, these important changes, changes, we've created a presentation that will provide clarity regarding the current status of the BASD, my recommendations, and the impact of those recommendations. So as we look to begin implementing the plan, more specific information regarding appointed individuals will be provided at our upcoming board meeting. Um, and we elected to use this format of communication because this is something that will also be viewable to our uh, staff tomorrow as well as our families. Um, so at this time, if we could uh, pause and Mr. Stauffer and Ms. Dietz will get us set up for sound. And uh, so if you could be patient for one minute, that would be greatly appreciated. While we arrange for the playing of the video. play into the comprehensive plan goal five, which we will provide further details about as we progress through this presentation. The presentation will provide background information related to the need to strengthen district organizational coherence, recommendations which will better align our administrative team for our future work, and upcoming phasing and action steps. The vision for the Dallas Town Area School District always serves as our guide as we work to inspire and create pathways for student success. It is based on this vision that we bring forth this refined administrative restructure plan as the district has not experienced a broad administrative restructure within the past 15 years. Up to this point in time, we have implemented a modified job freeze anytime an administrative position becomes open. The purpose of this step has been to provide a thorough review of the position and possible repurposing if job requirements require a change. However, when a broader change is needed based on demands, our team encounters and evident changes experienced in public education, we can no longer make considerations in isolation as these considerations do not coherently address the organizational needs as a whole. As we review the administrative team landscape over the next 10 years, it is clear that we will likely encounter multiple administrative retirements, coupled with additional needs and demands placed on members of our team. As our student enrollment continues to steadily increase, along with the phasing in of multiple building projects based on our completed feasibility study, we will be remiss if we did not ensure greater clarity in how to best restructure our administrative team to support success for the future of Dallas Town. Throughout the pandemic, we've had to examine the district as a whole, and we have learned that we must evolve in order to better serve our stakeholders. The planning and administrative restructure plan set forth looks at the entire Dallas Town Area School District organization as a whole, and in short, this plan has been established to enhance organizational coherence, internal operations, facility planning alignment, and to better address needs to support long-term sustainability at Dallas Town. As mentioned, this year we will begin implementation of a revised comprehensive plan. The revised plan is based on the examination of our current needs. 
The plan includes one critical goal related to goal 5.1, which requires our organization to better define internal operational systems. As such, the purpose of our administrative restructure is to enhance the allocation and efficient utilization of K-12 resources related to educational leadership, human resources, and business management. In addition, Goal 5.3 was established to ensure greater analysis of future growth and to determine strategies to support DASD sustainability for the future. This includes the development of a district philosophy to address emergent needs, as well as a phase long-term facility goals, long-term financial planning, and the deployment of resources to support DASD and building capacity for growth. Currently, it is our strategic intention to address the emergent needs that have been identified within the district. This plan is the first step of many to support the various challenges identified. This work will allow us to address coherence and efficiencies, systemsness and communication streams, continuity of programs and education, model for supervision and evaluation, building bridges across unique cultures, developmental reprogramming for efficiencies, and an educational philosophy for equitable learning opportunities. Change is inevitable and finding the right time to implement change is never easy. However, after great consideration and recognizing the abundance of multiple post-pandemic and, and demands placed on education, now is the time. It is imperative that we begin making preparations for the future sustainability of Dallas Town. Based on the outcome of the completed feasibility study, change begins here with the rec recommended administrative restructure. With that as a preamble, it's my recommendation as superintendent of schools to present a broad reaching administrative restructure plan that strategically allows us to better allocate the efficient use of administrative personnel and resources, which ensures we are best poised as an educational organization to inspire and create pathways for student success. This recommendation will be achieved in multiple phases over a 10 year period of time. The first phase is slated for the upcoming school year. Although a broad overview of each phase will be provided, the first phase will be the focus of our work for the remainder of this school year and the 2022-23 school year. Following phase one, two additional phases will be implemented. One will be implemented in the 2023-2024 school year, and a final longer term phase will be implemented in 2024 and beyond we also recognize the fluidity that occurs within any organization over the course of time and planning for the next 10 years is never easy. Although three specific phases have been delineated, please know our organization will continue to address emergent needs as they arise, make needed adjustments along the way, and always keep our focus on providing an appropriate alignment of our administrative restructure. Our first phase will take a broad look at our core mission. That mission is grounded in providing a superior education to our students. It is clear our principals are at the root of providing the needed educational leadership within our district. And as such, our primary focus in phase one will be to restructure existing administrative structures, primarily at the elementary and secondary levels. Five educational leadership roles will be implemented in phase one. In order to better support educational services at the elementary level as defined by grades K through six and the secondary level as defined by grades seven through 12, a director of elementary education and a director of secondary education will be established effective July 1, 2022. These positions will be responsible for directing the district's instructional programs facilitating ongoing development and alignment of the district's K-12 programs, as well as guiding, facilitating, communicating, and supporting building administration and staff to implement best educational practices. The district will also implement a supervisor of secondary programs and services position, which will provide the overall direction and support to the secondary guidance counselors in support of the district's mission to inspire and create pathways for the future. This includes, but is not limited to, secondary scheduling and counseling services, student pathway experiences, 
and oversight of our secondary DASD cyber program and Wildcat Compass Academy. Additionally, a supervisor of federal programs and services will be established, which will coordinate the district's federal programs and grants, as well as collaborate with district staff and outside personnel to formulate, develop, implement, and evaluate federal student services. Finally, the supervisor of social and student services uh, who provides oversight for enrollment, residency, safety, and security, homelessness and foster care, mental health outreach, and school-based auxiliary or outpatient services will transition to the supervisor of auxiliary services, which will also include direct oversight of district transportation services. In an effort to maintain clarity, cohesion, and fiscal responsibility, two positions will be eliminated, which include supervisor of curriculum and instruction and federal programs, as well as the Wildcat Compass Academy and DASD cyber principal. Additionally, the current supervisor of social and student services will be retitled the supervisor of auxiliary services. Beginning with educational leadership and implementing an efficient administrative restructure allows us to focus on the district challenges previously discussed. Starting with the core function of Dallas Town provides the opportunity for district cohesion and efficiencies, improved communication, and the continuity of programming and education while fostering equitable and meaningful learning opportunities. The district's rising enrollment and feasibility study results indicate the need to incorporate a phased enhancement of K-3 elementary buildings beginning with Leaders Heights Elementary. Phase two will include posting of a full-time assistant principal for leader sites, as well as a potential retirement place replacements. Our current administrative structure utilizes one assistant principal split between York Township and Loganville Springfield Elementary. The phase three construction projects coupled with the projected growth for these buildings indicate the necessity for a full-time assistant principal at each level. Additionally, as indicated in phase two, there will also be a need for retirement replacements in phase three. We recognize the importance of sharing information with our stakeholders during this transitional time of change, and we have set forth a communication plan to provide updates as necessary. On December 17th, the ASD staff will receive an internal communication and the public will receive updates through the District E-News Weekly. On January 21st, 2022, a communication will be shared regarding the DASD appointments and impacts of those appointments. In the spring of 2023, we'll provide an update through the superintendent's report during a monthly board business meeting. Additionally, communication will be sent as needed to specific stakeholders through various communication outlets. Phase one of the comprehensive plan, goal five, is slated for implementation for the 2022-2023 school year. To successfully achieve this goal, we will begin with the phase one job postings for the supervisor of secondary programs and services 712 position. This position will be posted on December 17th, 2021. Four remaining positions will be recommended to the board for appointment at the January 20th, 2022 meeting. These appointments include the Director of Elementary Education, the Director of Secondary Education, Supervisor of Federal Programs and Services, and the Supervisor of Auxiliary Services. It is important to note that direct appointments are based on areas of strength and expertise, knowledge and background, and individual skill sets. Selected candidates must showcase organizational knowledge, collaborative efforts, a focus on systems efficiencies, and be dedicated to the vision and mission of DASD. Additionally, some internal appointments will create subsequent job postings. Again, based on our communication timeline, information regarding the appointments and impacts of those appointments will be communicated on January 20th, 2022. In closing, we would like to thank all of our stakeholders for supporting the administrative restructure recommendation, as it is our goal to ensure a successful future for Dallas Town, where we are able to provide a safe, challenging, and relevant learning environment 
that inspires and create pathways for student success. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so with that said, obviously, I think the first thing I've, I've learned, we need to find a new narrator. That voice got a little annoying over the course of time. <laughs> uh, recognize that this information may, may take a lot of time to digest, and uh, which is why we will begin a communication link um, to this presentation tomorrow, as mentioned, as well as in the E! News Weekly. Um, additionally, we also recognize that this information may create a buzz within our community. Um, as I've said, uh, I was, I've been in the district for 15 years and we've been operating under the same administrative structure in that entire time. Uh, but there is time and based on what we have learned, uh, especially over the last two years through the pandemic, um, with need for some from broader change. Um, just to emphasize the leadership team currently in place will remain intact. Um, no one is leaving the district. Uh, we are just going to be reshifting some things. Um, additionally, we will remain intact as we presently are intact uh, till the end of the school year. So any change that we uh, share and communicate uh, will not occur until July 1. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of legwork and planning that goes into all of these uh, changes, and we want to make sure we're best poised to serve our, our students um, at the beginning of the year. So that's why we'd like to get a head start head start on that as well. Um, and finally, we'll obviously keep the board abreast, keep our community abreast of information uh, as we work through that process. So I do appreciate um, obviously the, some, the, the feedback, uh, particularly from the board. I think at this time, Mr. Pantan, to see if there's any questions or comments um, from the board. Do we have any questions or comments regarding the restructure administration? I don't. I have a question or comment about the part before, but I didn't act quickly enough. I was still formulating my question in my mind. That's fine. <laughs> Is that okay? Yep. That's fine. Does anyone else have anything about the structure before I change the topic? Okay, so back on the threats. Like, I'm a parent. I understand how unnerving it is to hear these rumors and social media. Um, it, you know, everything just ramps up and ramps up. And I, I know, because I sit here, I know the answer to these mm -hmm. questions. But because of privacy laws, you can't tell everyone what the situation is with these particular um, students and threats and things like that. I, I really, I'm just looking um, for the public who's here and listening. Can you give any sense of the fact that because um, I feel like that there's there's a narrative out there that nothing's being done, and I know that's not accurate. Um, to what extent you're able to share anything? Can you share anything? <laughs> no, and I think it's a, it's a great question and a question that we've had uh, several conversations with our um, individual families. And obviously, I have a I'm a parent of four, and so when I have sent, I still have two in the system. Uh, when I send my kids to school, they're my priority. We want to make sure first and foremost as a district. Um, if we don't get safety security right, we might as well just go home. And so it is something we take uh, tremendous uh, effort to, to work on. And to your point, Mrs. Trout, um, just as uh, an individual child comes in, there's individual rights associated with that child in relationship to confidentiality. And so it is frustrating from a community standpoint when something goes on, you wanna know the nuts and bolts of what occurred, more importantly, what happened to that child, more importantly, is that child in the school or not in the school? And we are simply not able to communicate that from a legal standpoint because um, it is a violation of uh, various rights. Um, so it is something I know frustrates the community from time to time. Um, I will say in some of our communications, if you pay attention closely, what we do is thoroughly investigate. And when there are threats in our school, uh, we act quickly. Um, there are, uh, so they are suspendable offenses. Uh, we work hand in hand. Uh, we have a school resource officer here on campus um, for the district. We also work with various detectives of the York Area Regional Police Department, state 
uh, State Department, and even in some cases, the FBI uh, working on specific cases. Uh, and then we do go through a process. So when we do communicate, um, it does create challenge. And I will say as a superintendent of the schools, it's something that you have to balance. And we'll take today's example. Uh, for instance, we had a threat that occurred through a TikTok across the nation, and there's no specific information, uh, but that starts to create a buzz in our community. Other districts start to communicate. We work hand-in-hand uh, -hand with our local law enforcement. Is there a threat? They do investigations. If there is some level of threat, they will go into homes. They will do gun checks. They will do all types of things working with families um, and to give us the best information to determine if something is credible or non-credible. But sometimes through even my communication as superintendent, I apologize, uh, we, I create some angst because I'm communicating um, information because I want to make sure that we are transparent to our community. So sometimes my community, communication even adds to it, and, but I, I apologize that occurs. I do not apologize for communication because at the same time, you deserve that as a community. Um, and so going back, I'm going away, way off your question, but, <laughs> um, but I think going back to your question, what I can communicate is, communicate is very much controlled um, through laws related to confidentiality. Um, and I recognize it's, it's, a, it's a gentle, um, it, there's a lot to ask of a family for your trust uh, with the most precious commodity that you own, and that's your children. But I will tell you, our most precious commodity is your children as well, and we take it serious. I would like to work uh, or give great thanks to our administrative team for hours of work. Uh, regardless of when the phone call comes in, uh, working around the clock. Um, we're working Mr. Dyke uh, over there, who will be the new auxiliary um, service uh, individual with a law enforcement background, SRO, uh, works wholeheartedly on ensuring that we have safety measures in place as well. So I do feel confident, um, but it also takes great partnership and it takes work, as I mentioned through social media earlier, it takes all of us working together, and there's some levels of. I just got aggressive. I'm sorry. <laughs> some levels of jurisdiction that we just simply do not have, and that's where, as a parent, um, as I said, having four boys myself, I understand social media, but we need to be vigilant because that is really, I think, the root of 80% uh, of what we're working with right now. Thank long, you. Long. That's great. Question. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Are there any other questions on any part of the superintendent's report? <laughs> I won't hit the mic anymore. How's that? I'd, I'd just like to commend Dr. Dahl for the, the thoughtfulness and the, the aggressiveness of the administrative restructuring. I think it's something that has been long overdue, as you pointed out. We had 15 years with the same structure, or probably more than that. That's how long you've been here. And, and uh, I, I think uh, that the, from my study of the new plan, I think that's going to position us for better management and better result. And so, so I commend you on your having the courage to proceed with such an aggressive plan. No other comments? I'd just like to also thank Dr. Dahl for the plan. Um, those listening and a reminder here, this plan was vetted through process through the HR committee. Uh, have a review here this evening and further information will be presented for approvals at future board meetings as Dr. Dahl mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. We are now up to consent items. Do I have a motion to approve the consent items on the agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Consent items pass. Action item 8A, <clears throat> acceptance of the 2020-2021 audit financial statements ending June 30th, 2021. I'd like to just give a quick introduction and then I'll pass it over to Mr. Warhol. 
this evening we have representatives from Mayor Dussel. And as a reminder, we went through an RFP process and selected a new auditor and approved a three-year contract in February of 2021. This evening we have Jennifer kruger Kibbe and Sarah Brenneman, and they'll be presenting their first report here at the Dallas Town Area School District, and we thank them and we welcome them. Mr. Rohrball, do you have anything to add? If nope, I think not, I'll turn it over to them. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Jennifer Kruger-Kibbe. <laughs> Difficult. Be careful. So we have audited the district's June 30, 2021 audit, and the opinion that we've given on the district's financial statements is what's called an unmodified opinion. It is the best opinion that the district can receive. And in that opinion, we say that the district's financial statements were fairly and materially correct in accordance with the accounting principles of the United States of America. In addition to the financial statement audit, we also perform what's called a government audit, uh, government auditing standards audit and uniform guidance because you've received more than $750,000 of federal funds. So we performed additional compliance tasks and additional internal control tasks. And we also gave an unmodified opinion in accordance with uniform guidance with regards to those major programs. So that's the best opinion you can receive in accordance with the uniform guidance. And we have no findings to report. So we did not come across any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies that we have to report to the board. And any best practice recommendations were discussed with our with the board and, and management. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? Just a reminder for those listening, as I mentioned at the top of the meeting, we as part of our executive session this evening, we did do a full and in-depth review of the audit process. So tonight, action item 8A is acceptance of the 2020-2021 audit. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mrs. Kirby, please call the roll. Mr. Baxter? Yes. Mr. Levin? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hopler? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Lytle? Yes. Mr. Trout? Yes. Mr. Lingard? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We look forward to working with you for the next two years, at least. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, action item 8B. Action item 8B is approval of a resolution authorizing a tax rate of no more than the Act 1 adjusted index. Mr. Rohrball. Thank you, Mr. Pantano. Tonight is the resolution before the board. Uh, this is part of the yearly process or the start of the budget process. It basically opts us out of the preliminary budget uh, process that we normally follow. Um, so again, this is not a guarantee on the taxes for the 21 or 22-23 school year. Uh, but it's for um, basically saying that we will not exceed the four and a half percent that is allowed by Act One. Any questions? We have a motion on action item 8B. Clarify one thing as I'm looking up there real quick. That says for fiscal year 21 22, it should be 22 23. The document is right. Sorry. Look at the title of the resolution. The attachment's correct. Right. So we'll have to have a motion to approve 8B as modified, not as presented. Do we care to wordsmith that out? I make a motion to approve item 8B with the modification to reflect it is for the fiscal year of 22-23. Second, anyone? Second. We have a motion and a second. I just want to make a comment before we call the, for a vote, uh, reiterating Mr. Rohrball that this is not suggesting that we will increase taxes, nor is this an approval to raise taxes in any way. This is largely a procedural vote indicating that if we should vote to raise taxes, it can be no more than the modified Act 1 index. 
So we have a motion and a second on this procedural motion. All those in favor? Yes? Yes. Yes. Any opposed? 8B carries. Thank you. Moving on, action item 8C, approval of Chromebook purchases for 22-23. Mr. Rohrball, Mr. Stauffer. Yeah, just uh, this was discussed at the last uh, last week's finance committee meeting. Uh, again, this is the district's yearly purchase of Chromebooks. Uh, this will go through our traditional line of credit, through which is now Traditions Bank. So with that, we'll seek approval. Any questions or comments on action item 8C as reviewed at finance committee? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes? Yes. 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 Any opposed? No? Motion carries. Thank you all. Action item 8D, approval of proposed policies. Mr. Bensel. I had previously talked to Dr. Heffler and nobody had uh, contacted me, so nobody had any questions about the proposed policies, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, policies uh, in front of us. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. As a reminder, these are the policies that were reviewed at the previous policy meeting. All those in favor? Yes? Yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we're into the best part of the evening. Information items 9A, report from student representative. Ms. Long. Um, good evening. Thank you for having me again this month. And I will be sharing with you all all of the important events clubs and organizations have been working on throughout the district. And I will be giving a brief summary of my report while my full report will be on the online agenda. The 76th issue of the Dallas Town High School yearbook is currently on sale. They are anticipating an outstanding book of student, student life, student activities, and clubs, sports, music, and more. They have over 50 student staff members, and if you're interested in purchasing a copy, please visit their website. The newly established High School Fashion Club has been collecting clothing donations from the student body and staff. This week, they've been having a thrift store in the front lobby over lunch and at the end of the school day. Their hope is to provide inexpensive clothing options to students as well as, their high, as, well as highlight their mission to improve sustainability of fashion. This week, uh, DPAC, DPAC, and ITS participated in its annual PA State Thespians Conference. They have lots of activities for the students to participate in. Please join me in congratulating Max Mozart and Nicole Fleury in earning first place in the Quick Change event, as well as the combined efforts of Nicholas Ryan, Grayson Lauer, Valerie Hull, Mac Moser, and Ma Molly Binkley as they earned first place overall in the Tech Challenge. They would also like to mention that Dallas Town High School's International Thespian Troop, number 7073, was honored a gold honor troop for their hard work. We even had inductees into this year's Hall of Fame including Grayson Lauer for overall excellence in theater, Val, Val Poole for excellence in performance, and Nicholas Ryan for excellence in technical theater. Over 400 juniors participated in the PSAT in October. These scores were released to students on December 7th. The counselors at the high school will now be working with students to help them interpret their scores, see how their scores um, help to prepare them for the SAT, consider taking AP courses, and gain access to scholarships and post-secondary planning. This month, students at the high school registered for nearly 40 AP exams that will be administered in May. Dallastown High School's annual Poetry Out Loud recitation competition will be held virtually again this year. Submissions are due to Mrs. Euninger by December 17th, and entries will be judged by a panel of volunteers with the top three being announced on December 23rd. This month, this month, the French Club and French National Honor Society are hosting their annual Bouche de Noël cake competition. The two clubs are expecting around 30 traditional Yule log cakes that will be judged by high school staff in Montessor Harris classroom. 
The students are excited to see and smell the cakes this, per this year in person after last year's virtual competition. Donor Drive is back and the high school's mini fawn is, that is an event to raise money for childhood cancer is less than 80 days away. The organization will begin registering students right after the holiday break. HealthSat is hosting a blood drive Wednesday, December 22nd from 8.30 to 1.30 in the swimming pool circle. All of Dallas Town students, teachers, administrators, support staff, and of course, school board members are always welcome to donate. They also recently had three different programs for high school students to enjoy and learn about medical school. They are currently working on the Cards of Hope project that delivers cards to seven different long-term care facilities. National Art Honor Society has had several fundraisers this season. They raised around $500 to support the art scholarship through DAEF. They raised $290 for the caring and sharing drive for those in need in our community. They are holding a handmade holiday card and ornament ball sale starting December 16th to support local charities. And lastly, they are planning on pairing with the high school student council to paint the front lobby for their annual Welcome to Winter Day. The National Art Honor Society and Art Club collaborated to complete a beautiful mural that is now on display at Miller Plant Farm. Visitors to the store and online vote, votes on the best mural and the winning school gets the proceeds. I was informed this morning that our Dallas Town mural has officially won the competition. So please enjoy me, join me in congratulating the club and the mural creator, Ariana Shirey, on their hard work. The mural is pictured on my online agenda. The Intermediate School held their annual holiday choral concert on December 6th. They had two successful shows and the students did an amazing job. Tonight is their holiday instrumental, instrumental concert and tickets were required to attend the event. On December 23rd, the Intermediate School is holding a building-wide PJ and Play Day. They want to thank the gracious families who donated games for the students to play with during their day and future indoor recess. High School Student Council has been busy this holiday season as well. They are currently planning Welcome to Winter Day, which will take place on December 23rd. They also just finished collecting non-perishables for the Caring and Sharing Drive, overflowing all three of their baskets. Lastly, this month they collected gently used or new books, ages six and up, for the Wellspan Reach Out and Read program. The Leo Club works hand in hand with the local Lions Club to volunteer within the community. This month they collected non perishable foods to donate and paired with Health Stat Club to participate in Cards of Hope. They also consistently write pen pal letters to those who are unable to, unable to leave their homes during these crazy times. And on December 18th, they will be placing wreaths on graves with the lions for wreaths across America. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions or comments for Ms. Long in the student report? Very impressive. Great job. I just want to say I love that you included stuff from the intermediate school. That was great. Thank you. Not just high school. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Information item 9B, Reliance Transportation Report. Mr. Fisher. Mr. Pantano, it's that time of year again where we do our mid-year report from uh, Reliance Student Transportation. So without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Pauly and uh, he can walk us through the report. Good evening. Hey, it's great to be back. It's been a while. <laughs> I was thinking about this day. We've been transporting uh, for six years now. I can't believe it's on that fast. The last two years, a little bit of a blur. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me again. Uh, let me turn the slide. Uh, just again, we'll update on the driver and the route status, talk about our org chart, um, core values. I'll just talk about real quickly. Incidents, accidents, try to give you an idea of how we're doing, and uh, I'll take any questions. So we're running out 95, well, we're running 95 routes a day, 61 school buses, 52 public, nine non public, 30 vans, so the 10 passenger weight vans. Four wheelchair vans. Right now, we have four open bus routes. We have one person in our pipeline, one van run, and that person starts January. So we started the year a little bit rough, to be honest with you, coming back from last year. And, uh, but things seem to be settling out. 
uh, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with our progress. Again, it was, we've had some tough moments, frankly, uh, in hiring folks, like in many, many companies, but uh, I'm pretty happy on our progress. Next slide. So, give you a flavor since July. We've hired seven bus drivers, 16 van drivers. We've lost seven people on the bus side, so we're sort of a wash. Um, three went to full time jobs, two retired, and two were COVID related. One specific person didn't want to wear a mask, and I think the other one was sort of similar. They just didn't like that policy, but it is what it is. So, um, hopefully, we'll pull them back maybe in the spring if we get past March, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, we, we've lost 12 van drivers, four we hired and didn't show up, but we actually, they were on our payroll. Four people um, left for personal reasons, a lot of times it's medical, we, they don't pass our physical. Um, two are full time, but jobs and two retired. So it's just a mix match of type of things. One of the things we did, I, I found this really interesting, I hope you find it as exciting as I do, but back in 2019, I started looking at our, our training for the school bus side. And we had 100 prospects come through our training center, and we graduated 30. And I would say to my peers, that, that doesn't sound very good to me, but uh, they said, that's not bad. I'm like, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel really good to me. So we sat back in late 19, right before COVID, and we started a new program called Reliance Way. It's all the same PennDOT, you know, rules or regs that we have to follow. But we, we did, we kind of flipped the model completely upside down. We didn't pay our trainings. I mean, they were getting a CDL license. If you go get a CDL license in a trucking company, you're paying five to ten thousand dollars for the training. But we flipped that around, so we're guaranteeing people that start with us they can't wait eight, twelve weeks to get paid. So now we say we're going to be eighty hours, twenty hours a week for four weeks, and that's your job. You come in every day, four hours a day, and we drill and drill and drill, kind of like arithmetic, right? ABC. We just drill them to pass the test. We've had 14 prospects at Dallas Town. Our graduation rate is 93%, and that person will finish. We've taken it from eight to 12 weeks to 26 days. <clears throat> so that's it's it, this is we really made some really good progress here. But what's interesting too is I was watching people go through our classroom. We use a lot of paper tests, um, but when you go to PennDOT, there's no paper. And we st I started realizing that we get a lot of retired people. Some their computer skills aren't real solid. So we, we set up a classroom just like you have. We do Chromebooks. We created a whole database of exactly the same type of test you're going to see. So if it's 50 questions for general knowledge or 20 questions for the school bus, they keep testing in our office on a Chromebook until they get it right. And what was interesting that I didn't expect was we could start seeing feedback from the, what they were failing on and changing our classroom to address the issue. So I'm pretty excited about this system-wide. We've had about 40 people through. We've graduated 95% in four weeks, system-wide in York. So this, this has really made a difference on me. Even it maybe didn't look so good on the outside of you guys, but we really feel like this made a lot of progress for us in the last year. We started this in March of, well, February 21 is when we really kicked it in. So. Next slide. Um, just some headwinds I want to share with you. So we get thrown in with the trucking business a lot. And uh, so there's a new role coming in February called entry level driver training. So our training doesn't actually change, but what happens is the federal government is now part of our process. So today we, we run you through our classroom, we run you through our behind the wheel, and then we have a third party tester that we pay to certify that you can pass the test. Of course, PennDOT always does the written test. We talk to PennDOT in Pennsylvania to get your license and you go to work. Now what we have to do starting in February is you do your classroom time, we have to submit it to the federal government and they have to approve it. It's pretty quick from what I've seen. Then we have to do the same thing with the, the driving. They have to approve that piece. So when we take you to the CDL tester, that person will look on the federal database to make sure we've shown your training both in the classroom and behind the wheel. It's really about trucking, getting the proper training. In Pennsylvania, it's very unique. It's highly regulated for school bus in Pennsylvania. Not true in most other states. So we're kind of ahead from a training perspective, but unless you guys have a different experience, like the feds don't, they tend to slow things down, not speed things up. So, <laughs> uh, drug and alcohol clearinghouse, again, we've been doing drug and alcohol testing for years, but now we have to report at the federal level. And now, here's where the wrinkle is the driver also has to participate. So, again, when you, when you add them into the mix, they slow down potentially. 
this has been about a year. We started this year. They're really going to start enforcing it in 22. Um, again, they're looking for the bad people, right? So, uh, a classic example is we had a person who failed a pre-employment in the past. You wouldn't know that, but you'll know that now. Again, trucking is a big part of this. And the last thing is medical marijuana. I found this very interesting. I think it's probably COVID related in some cases, but we've we terminated more people in the last 12 months for marijuana than I've seen in 25 years. Um, and they all have cards. But so I just bring it up to you because this, this is going to somewhere pop up somewhere. And, uh, you know, we have uh, mar medical marijuana in PA. You know, they're talking about rec marijuana. I don't know how we reconcile this from a driver point of view. It's not just a school bus issue, it's a trucking issue, it's a company issue, it's a school district issue with your car. So I just bring it up because, again, these are headwinds I see coming out over the next 12 to 24 months. <coughs> Organizational chart, uh, sorry about that, that's not easy to read. Uh, pretty much everyone's still here. Uh, the big change, for, unfortunately, for you guys is Bert, our manager um, that was here for several years, he, he pretty burned out last year. It's just real simple. I mean, it just got to him. He did stay with us. He's running our shop. Uh, we hired a person this summer that had school bus experience. We brought her in from Pittsburgh. She was great all summer until the first week of school. And then we realized it didn't work out. So we are, we've been looking for the right person since September. In the meantime, Bill Yan, who works for me, uh, he's been filling in in that role. So we haven't sort of missed the manager role. We just haven't found the, the person that's going to be permanent. So it's, it's tough. We've really interviewed a couple people and just... Um, just, we just don't think we've found the right person yet, frankly. So we'd rather almost leave it vacant with Bill and adjust our internal management until we find the right person. So fingers crossed for 22. Yeah. Core values, always like talking about values. Again, this is uh, last time I saw you, I talked about Reliance Cares. Um, it's kind of a tougher meeting because it was that one with all the masks. We were like everywhere in the corner. But again, I, I talk about this to our people. You know, we have to be honest. We got to get the bad news. If we have bad news, we got to figure it out. Troy knows that, mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot. You know, love. We got to love our work. If you don't, if you don't love working with kids, you're just not going to be successful as a school bus driver or a van driver. You know, we have growth and learning, people focus, accountability. I just keep driving these into the organization. I really believe the more we can drive it down to the driver group, the better experience that the, the parents and kids see at the street level. So. Uh, incidents and accidents. So incidents are small, real small things, but I always tell you about whenever students are on board, good, bad, or different. We had five this year, four were our fault, one was not our fault, but they're little things like we broke two mirrors on a car going down maybe Maple Street. Uh, one was a stop sign, we, we scraped the stop sign, we got stuck, they turned around, it was wet. So good news, nothing really too exciting there for you guys. We had no injuries and no DOT reportables, we just refresher. You know, your, your memory, that's when we have the toe, person goes to the hospital, we have a fatality. So, so far, so good. The, the one thing I do want to mention, we do have new fleet coming in for you guys this year, um, praying that the chips show up. But we did order them for January. They're supposed to be built in about two weeks. So we ordered them very early because I don't really trust the manufacturers, frankly, at this <laughs> point. So I do expect we can have all the buses in. We have 15 system-wide. I think about five will come here, and we'll get rid of five and just keep that layering, that aging for you guys. We also have 12 vans ordered for May. Ford has not been our friend over the years. You guys have heard those stories. I mean, they promise, they promise, and then they like, don't deliver at all. Like, they just don't show up. But we, we ordered as early as the first day they opened up. Right now, I'm being told there's no equipment available nationwide for school start. So if you don't have it now, get orders, you're not going to get it. So we'll have to see how things shake out. It's going to be an interesting spring from the point of view, but I, I feel comfortable because we, we moved quickly on it um, earlier this year. So with that, I'll stop. So any questions? Anything additional, Mr. Fisher? No, I just appreciate John's uh, creativity and just cooperation with us. I mean, uh, it was a little bit of a rough start, but we we haven't missed the we haven't missed the route. Um, we have we always find a way to get it done. So yeah. appreciate the partnership. Yeah, I apologize. We we really tried to get a good start. It was tough. I mean, we. Just, our folks um, are older, you know, we have about 55% over 50 years old, and you know the concerns. I mean, mm -hmm. just be begging, please, and try this to... This is not a local thing. This is nationwide. Yeah. And I, I would say, just as superintendent, I appreciate the, the ownership you take 
in everything and cooperation, I would agree. If there's an issue, um, you're on it, you're on the phone, you're addressing it. And uh, it is, it's a, it's certainly a, a national problem you're up against, but you're del still delivering goods and you have great people that are, you're working with. I appreciate it. We want to do a good job for the parents and students and you guys. So. Well, before I open it for a question, I just want to thank you also, Mr. Polly. I'd like to also thank all of your drivers and the entire Reliance staff. Um, you know, we're not on the front line, but we understand you, that Reliance has been a great partner and uh, it was challenging out of the gate, uh, but it really helped us to achieve our goals. And in most cases or many cases, your drivers are the first face our students are seeing in the morning on their way to school. So um, just want to say thank you. And if you can pass on our appreciation to your drivers and I'll open the floor to questions or comments for Mr. Polly. Thank you. I just want to make a quick comment and kind of reiterate what everyone's been saying. <clears throat> I was here the six years ago when we switched. Um, what a difference. And we've said this every year, but it was just interesting when you were talking about the, drive, the training, the fact that you recognized that there was an issue and you did something to, about it. You were proactive instead of reactive. And, and that's just such, it was, that is such a refreshing change from what we had. Um, it, it's just amazing. And I just really appreciate that. So I, I applaud you for, for looking at that and how you can best service your your customers. Um, again, you are transporting our most, the most precious cargo ever. Um, so you are concerned about the safety, but yet you understand the difficulties of getting the people up and running. So I appreciate you looking at that, still making it safe and making those drivers safe, but also making sure that we have the, the staff that we need to get our students there. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Question. First of all, thank you. Great, great report. Great presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, just had a question about with uh, you talked about the incidents with uh, marijuana. Uh, is there random drug testing? Absolutely. That's done. Yeah. And is when the random. So there are people that claim with you know, medical marijuana that being uh, legal in Pennsylvania. Is it? Uh, is it the incident occurred being they were under the influence of marijuana? Was it while they were working or just well, at all? We caught them on a random. Okay. So we do randoms quarterly, 50% of our population uh, in a, in a uh, consortium with Wellspan. Mm -hmm. So I forget how many, there's thousands and thousands of people in there, but we, I'm going to guess we probably test 150 people a year on a random. It's drug and alcohol. Okay. Um, generally, we don't catch people. It just surprised us this spring. We had two people this spring. It's very, I, I don't even remember having a marijuana branded in 25 years. We okay. caught an alcohol once in a while, but uh, okay. not, a, not a marijuana. But they had cards, so. And the thing is, I don't, what I can't say to you is, were they impaired doing their job? I don't know, because I don't know what that means from a marijuana perspective. I can tell you from an alcohol perspective what it means. But we're zero either way, so it's, okay. we terminate you right away. Okay. Yeah. And, and the random testing can be done whether whether or not they're on the job. Is that is that uh, accurate? Or is it only whenever they're we, get, we have them in the morning. In the morning, and we pick Mondays a lot, <laughs> and, and they don't know it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the whole point, right? Sure. Yes, yeah, so we walk up and say, "Okay, it's your time." Yeah. You know, there's the there's the bathroom. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks, John. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks, John. Information item 9C, Bowling Team Booster Club Bylaws. Mr. Rohrball. Thank you, Mr. Pantano. I'm pitching it tonight for Mr. Looking Ball because he has an athletic event. Uh, tonight attaches the Booster Club Bylaws for the Bowling Team. Uh, these are similar to the ones that uh, we approved a month or so ago for the golf team, uh, but new booster clubs are being formed here at the district. So, any questions? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Rohrball. Information item 9D, proposed 2022-23 calendar at a glance. Dr. Dahl. Thank you, and we're pleased to present the upcoming calendar uh, a draft and it has already been vetted uh, with our leadership team, uh, DAEA leadership, and uh, various individuals throughout the school district. Um, additionally, we have shared the information with our council PTO, so we've solicited feedback from a number of, uh, a number of parties. 
Um, I would like to thank uh, certainly our principals. Uh, they have the best inside scoop on what goes on with the calendar. I also want to thank uh, from the association, Jennifer Rogers and uh, Ms. Teresa Lewis for preparing. Um, the highlights of the calendar, if you can see, uh, it's a, it does comply with uh, all state requirements, 180 days, uh, student days. Um, you're going to see a start of Thursday, August 25th, and a conclusion of Monday, uh, July, I'm sorry, not July, June 5th. <laughs> um, I will say, just in transparency, we've had so, some dialogue, conversation, feedback related to the concern with coming back that part following Monday. Um, but at the same time, there's uh, concerns with other areas where you add days, so the, it's, it's really a pay now, pay later um, situation. Um, also, we would continue with some uh, early transition with our grade seven through nine on August 24th. Um, the calendar does maintain K through 12 consistency from transportation, uh, days one through six model, as well as the trimester model. And uh, we did, just from an adjustment standpoint, make a couple adaptations. Um, you're going to see a break uh, right around Thanksgiving holiday to include Wednesday, November 23rd as a holiday with schools and offices closed. Um, additionally, this will be added into, if approved, our support staff handbook. Um, we've also added, um, even up to yesterday, uh, a half student day on the calendar on Friday, December 23rd uh, with a full uh, day for our staff. Um, to implement weather, I know that's always the great de debate, right, Mrs. Easton? Mm -hmm. um, to implement weather days are built in, so we have scaled back um, on that, one being Friday, September 17th. Uh, the other one uh, is a weather makeup day on Thursday, April 6th. Um, and I will say we also have added, sprinkled in uh, four half days early dismissals, uh, and that is for some of our staffing uh, model needs specific to training. Um, so you will see uh, some, some natural breaks um, that are also built within the calendar. So uh, in a nutshell, we do present the calendar this evening. This is still, I will remind, please do not put it on your refrigerator yet. This is still a fluid document. I believe we're, I can't even read the fine print, we're probably on draft 10 already, um, and that will continue to evolve, and certainly we're going to seek board feedback. Uh, so Mr. Pantano, if I may ask if there's anyone that has specific feedback from the board, it may be best to communicate with me directly through email uh, in anticipation for our January 20th meeting where we'll be seeking approval and then I would highlight any changes and recommendations at that point in time. Very good, Dr. Dahl. Are there any questions or comments now regarding this iteration? And we will review at yep. the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dahl. Information item 9E, other appointments, affirmation related to the organization. I'll, I'll keep this brief. Um, the board has had several conversations, as those of us up here know, regarding ways to make our operation more efficient and potentially restructuring the way we handle our committees and how we operate. Um, it's inherently awkward with the change in leadership mid-school year. Uh, we haven't yet determined how we're going to handle those committees. And we have a workshop scheduled for early January where that will be our main topic. And we will discuss and we will um, look at the potential options and see what will work best for us as a group to accomplish our goals and our tasks. Having said all that, as I said in brief, the policy also requires the president to appoint committees and committee chairs at organization, which is now. So I have asked the board um, to please continue their current committee assignments as is and as structured for the foreseeable future until we can determine uh, if and what changes we'd like to make to that structure. The chart that you're seeing up on the screen is the chart that was provided last year. Notable changes, I'd like to thank Mr. Bensel, Mr. Blevins, Mrs. Hostler, and Mr. Lytle for continuing in their chairmanship positions. Um, committee will remain, a, or I'm sorry, committee. Finance will remain a committee of the whole, and thank you, Mr. Blevins, for retaining that chairmanship. Uh, as past president, Mr. Blevins was ex officio, so if anyone's out there comparing documents, you'll see that ex officio has been removed. 
under Mr. Blevins. Um, we've asked him to do a few other things at this point. And for the foreseeable future, I'll retain my position on buildings and capital projects until we figure that out. So that's just, I wanted to give an update to, um, I've spoken to all of you up here that you know about it. I wanted to give an update to the public and also sort of let the public know that procedurally we kind of had to make some decisions and this is likely to change. You'll likely to see this in an upcoming meeting, potentially some policy shifts and changes with committee structure. <laughs> Moving right into 9F, Finance Committee, and over to Mr. Blevins. Thank you, Mr. Pantano. I'll be brief. Uh, the Finance Committee met on December 9th. Uh, we talked about, uh, started off our meeting with two items that we previously approved as action items tonight, one being the, uh, the tax resolution, the other one being the Chromebooks. Um, we, we spent a fair amount of time uh, getting an update on the special ed program and some of the budgetary implications of that and some proposed uh, restructuring of that, which we will uh, continue our discussion on that at our next meeting and uh, hopefully be in a position to approve or disapprove, as the case may be, that at our January 20th meeting. Uh, Mr. Rohrball gave us a very preliminary uh, budget projection for the current fiscal year. Uh, and uh, we discussed ban uniforms, uh, which, which we will uh, take up as an action item on January 20th. And finally, uh, we had uh, some preliminary discussions regarding uh, video scoreboards and corporate sponsorships, and that will be an ongoing conversation as we move forward. So, any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Blevins. And 9G, PSBA liaison report, Mr. Bensel. Thank you. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, the House passed Bill 2071, and that is the, the one on the internet to help break down the barriers to broadband deployment in the underserved and under uh, of Pennsylvania. Then here's one, and I guess this is unfunded mandate, not, not to take away from the importance of it, but House Bill 21. 58 would require schools to annually provide parents and guardians of students in grades 6 through 12 with information regarding eating disorders. In addition, an eating disorder task force would be created within the Pennsylvania Department of Education. This task force would develop guidelines for the information provided by the schools. So maybe uh, they'll come up with the information. We just have to pass it out. I don't know. Or... That's... I will tell. That's a fluid. <laughs> And then I know we talked about this last time, but the uh, House Bill 1332 did pass on the uh, access to the students' curriculum. So it, it passed both the House and the Senate. Uh, I think it, I'm not sure when it goes up. Yeah, at this point in time, just doing a little reading on that, I know it was a very much split Republican Democrats, so it'll go to Governor Wolf, yeah, so. who will likely veto that at this point in time. And then the last one is House Bill 937 would amend Pennsylvania's public school code to prohibit a child from being required to be immunized for COVID-19 as a condition of attendance in any public or private K-12 school. It says that the bill has nothing to do with the efficacy of um, the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, which is now available to children ages 5 to 15 under the U.S. Food and Drug Administration under the Emergency Use Authorization. That's it. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Bensel? Okay. 9-H, LIU Board Report, Mrs. Easton. Thank you, Mr. Pantano. Um, I know you've been hearing me talk about the health center, that the two health centers that we're building, the one at the New Oxford building and the one at the York Learning Center. Um, 
They were supposed to open in November. Of course, we did not get all the supplies that we needed. We were waiting for some things. Um, we're slated to open the end of January, hopefully. We'll have a soft opening and then, then we'll be up and running for business. Um, they do have the, the um, nurse practitioners and the, um, the patient advocacy person hired. So they have the staff there, they're ready to go. Um, we just have to tighten up the, the actual construction and, and get open, so that's good. Um, we also, um, as every district is having issues with subs, um, the, the LIU is, has even harder times filling their subs than what districts do because of the, populate, the population of the student and what we do. Um, <clears throat> we were, in the beginning of the school year, we were having a fill rate of about 36% average in York County. Um, so we as a board decided to, um, with the recommendation from the administration, to increase the sub rate. And we did do that, and with doing that, we have now a roughly average of 53% fill rate in York County. So it's still low, but we're increasing here, so we're good. And they actually had 14 new subs that have never worked with the IU before sign on. So that's a good sign that, you know, that seemed to work. Um, then Dr. West also talked a little bit about, um, he's working with the, our, the new, our new communication person at the IU. Um, to send, with let, information being sent to legislators um, on behalf of the district in regards to the concerns for the staffing and um, regarding requirements for the subs. And I know he's been talking with the superintendents mm -hmm. and getting their feedback and what needs, you know, what the concerns are and stuff like that. So the IEO is trying to to do that, some of the advocacy um, on the state level to try to get some of these things looked at, see if we, what we can change and, and help out the district. So that is... We're doing any questions. Thank you, Mrs. Easton. And moving right into the York Learning Center Joint Authority. Also, Mrs. Easton. Yes. Um, that's always a fun meeting. It, we did have our audit and we reviewed our audit. We got a clean audit, so that was good. Um, nothing else major. Uh, like I said, you know, the health center is, is almost done. Um, we are revisiting the lighting issue. Um, someday we'll figure out what we're doing with that, but that is it. Questions, comments? Okay. York Adams Academy, Mrs. Easton for the hat trick. <laughs> now, this is a good one. Um, I do want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Wingard and Dr. Dahl for attending the graduation on the 7th. I was unable to attend because I had the great York Learning Center and Turn Authority meeting to do. Um, so I, that was the first graduation I've missed since I've been the representative, so I was very sad. But I know that it, we were greatly represented by the two gentlemen. We did have one graduate, mm -hmm. um, so that was really nice to hear. Um, and I hear it went off very smoothly. I don't know if you two want to add anything. You want to say something first? Well, we had, it was nice afterwards. It went very smoothly. It was, it was a, a very nice graduation. And, uh, but the best part of it was when uh, we had a chance to uh, uh, meet with the Dallas Town graduate at the end. His family, great family, very supportive, very, very appreciative of uh, the uh, role that Dallas Town had in, in making uh, their son successful. And it, it, it's kudos to uh, uh, Dr. Dahl as well as to uh, Mr. Probert to making all of that happen. But it was it was a good evening, and uh, it was just great to see their appreciation for another success story. Yeah, I think you said a uh, great swing guard. I would just say it's a great, wonderful reminder to me of how we inspire and create pathways for student success. And that does not have to take place within the walls here of Dallas Town. There are many outlets and um, his, his sto story, the story of uh, the graduates emphasized that. So it was definitely an enjoyable evening. Thank you again for attending that graduation. Um, one other thing, um, we did discuss um, our budget for the 22-23 school year. Um, we will, the YAA board will vote on that in January and we will pass it on to the school district. Just a heads up, we are looking for an increase per seat. Um, we operate on a very shoestring budget. We do not have a large fund balance. Um, so we just, we're still gonna be in the negative, even with having the increase. We're looking at a $40,000 negative with the, the budget that we have, but at least um, it will keep us going again for a while. And, and we are, it looks like we are gonna up the, um, the um, the subcommittee was looking to the future of YAA, um, so that, that 
And that is one way we're looking at is how the payment, how we're going to, you know, the structuring of the payment, just the future of YAA. Um, I, the director that we hired this, at the beginning of the school year is wonderful. She really is thinking outside the box. She is bringing different people into the in to talk to the students about different ways that they can. It doesn't have to be a trade school or or a college or anything like that. She's bringing in firefighters and EMTs and. I mean, she's just looking at all the different possibilities that these kids can do after they leave YAA. So I really appreciate this new director and how much she's trying to really engage our students and really make them ready to be successful when they graduate. So I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's, we're gonna, it's great to look outside the box and really reimagine what we can do for our students. Thank you, Mrs. Easton. Any questions or comments on the York Adams Academy report? Good, thank you. Buildings and capital projects. Mr. Lytle. Thank you, Mr. Cantano. Uh, we really set the table or started the work uh, resetting the table for the K3 initiative as we're looking forward. So we kind of spent the meeting looking at what our standard, re revisiting what our standard is, um, what the feasibility study has projected to this point, and the fruits of what the board activity was to this point and the decisions that we have made to give us clear guidance to where the committee should be going for both the funding and the goal standpoint. So that was all in mind with preparing for Monday's meeting with RLPS to start hashing out what that process would be. To inform the board, we still don't have that RLPS presentation yet. That should be tomorrow. So, but again, they will be there Monday. We will give you that information as soon as we receive it. We did look for board sort of feedback on input that they were looking for to the process. Uh, all of them were very reasonable accommodations. We did pass that along to the Tony and uh, administration to incorporate those thoughts into the committee action. So thank you all for that input and look forward to that. So I feel very comfortable that we're moving forward to Monday's meeting with uh, promise. So thank you for all your efforts. Uh, we also spent a moment, uh, Mr. Bouchon came and spoke to us to inform us as a courtesy to the advances that they're making with through the PTO's effort for fundraising and placement of the playground. There was a little support that the district did offer. Um, we just want to thank them again publicly for their efforts. Um, we did reassure them that we are looking at this as a district offer or, you know, to what our district standards will be going forward and their place. But we're glad that they also didn't wait for that decision and that they really wanted to reward their children and those who funded the money and moved the project on as quickly as possible. No, I'm um, <laughs> so, again, thank you for taking your time on an extra night to come out and for all you do at your township. We appreciate it. And with that, uh, we'll see you Monday. Thank you. Questions or comments for Mr. Lytle? Okay. York County School of Technology, JOC, also Mr. Leo. Thank you, Mr. Pitano. And before I begin, I really need to thank you for uh, your recognition and your reaffirming me to the position at Tech. I think I'm well suited for it. I think we made some great progress there. Uh, I know there's a lot of interest across the board in that uh, with Mr. Wingard and other people, so I know you do have choices. And I do appreciate the fact that you let me have another term there because there is still work to be done. Um, Sue, I'm glad to hear that you have a fund balance because that's the next step that we need to fight for at Tech, and I think we'll have support. So there is still work to be done, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to continue to pursue those efforts, because I think a successful program there will benefit Dallas Town directly with our proximity and the way we use it. Um, the only other point to make is the budget did come out. It will be an action item for next month, and I look forward to the vote at that time. So thank you. The rest of the minutes are attached. Thank you, Mr. Lytle. Questions or comments from Mr. Lytle on your county school of technology? Okay. The calendar of board events is attached, as are the conference requests. We are now up to the point, the second opportunity for public comments. I will again remind anyone making a public comment, if you're in person, step up to the microphone. If you're online, Use the raise hand option. Please limit your comments to two minutes or less. Total time will be limited to 30 minutes per topic. And also at the top, please state your name and address for the record. Do we have any comments from the public?
being no comments from the public, this is opportunity for board comment and or board correspondence. Mr. Pantano, may I make a, a personal statement? I know I'm in the majority or the minority here, but uh, and I've always said when it came to the COVID protocols that uh, we need to obey the law and the law has spoken and uh, the wearing of the masks are optional and I respect that. I, I really do respect that. However, I am concerned about the increased cases the growing, uh, that are growing rapidly, the hospitalization, uh, and even the fact that Dallastown had to have a couple of virtual classes due to uh, COVID. And so as such, I am personally, just me, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of the board, I would like to personally ask our Dallastown family to consider wearing a mask for another three weeks. One more week be between now and Christmas and then the two weeks afterwards during this high travel season uh, to help keep somebody else safe. Uh, I know that after all, all of us, and I am speaking for the board, all of us want to keep students in the classroom. And that's our priority. And with so many people traveling right now and so many people in, in situations that uh, social distancing is not possible, I just think we can buy ourselves a little bit of insurance and, and wear the mask. I hate them too. I, I don't like them. And, uh, you know, I think we all have COVID fatigue, but I, I couldn't rest easy unless I put that out there. And again, I'm speaking only as Scott Winger, not on behalf of the board, but I would like to just ask our Dallas Town family to consider uh, respectfully a three week extension of wearing masks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wingard. Any other board comments or correspondence? Yep. May I make a comment? Yes, you may. Um, I just want to take this opportunity uh, this past week uh, working with uh, Mr. Pantano and Mrs. Hostler. I know we spent several hours, uh, good good timing. Sorry. <laughs> we spent several hours, about three and a half, four hours uh, this past week. This is an orientation. Um, you asked great questions. You um, certainly were, were great students learning and kind of going through uh, all of the motions. And I know that you're also outside of that spending a lot of time. So I appreciate your, your studentness and taking the role serious. Thank you, Dr. Dahl. Did you have any board comment or correspondence? I don't. I apologize. <laughs> uh, I would like to just follow up with Dr. Dahl final comment as well. And this is more of a thank you to uh, Dr. Dahl and my board compatriots. I, I know it's been one week. Um, I appreciate all of the members up here, your level of communication and your level of accommodation as I work my way through this new role. I appreciate the support I've gotten from each of you, and I appreciate your all willingness to affirm the, the committee structure that I proposed while we sit down together and figure out the way forward. I'd like to thank Dr. Dahl for his, well, it's three and a half hours, because you went a half an hour over, but <laughs> three and a half hours uh, crash course, as it were, uh, getting ready for this meeting and some other things that are coming up. I know that there'll be a lot of a lot more of those. Uh, I look forward to working with you very closely. I look forward to working with you, Mrs. Hostler, very closely, and uh, I look forward to this new role. And I appreciate everyone's understanding and indulgence while I get my feet under me. And if I stumble, I apologize in advance. But I just want to say a thank you to everybody out there and up here. With no further board comments or correspondence, do we motion to adjourn? No. Well, you can use your gavel. This is the defining <laughs> moment of your presence. No one has ever used it, I don't think. No one has ever used it. Mr. Blevins said time. he never used it. <laughs> Eating is adjourned.